okay. <clears throat> it's okay being the last speaker because I imagine the applause at the end will be greater than everyone else enjoyed, but it'll be a reflection of the fact that it's finally over. Um, you also deserve to know as a polite audience what's in the little black book that's been circulating up here. It's a stick figure hanging on a gallows. <laughs> and it's too cute to really scare the speaker into concluding his remarks. I want to uh, uh, widen the lens aperture a bit uh, to remind us uh, how we got to what we are discussing today. Um, and I think this uh, issue was first framed in uh, Art Hughes' introductory remarks and mentioned just now by Marshall. Uh, the uh, issue of Jerusalem is largely an idea in people's minds. If we look back in history, uh, there never was a defined uh, place uh, of Jerusalem, but rather a place that was inhabited at various times by various peoples uh, with various stakes and various claims. Uh, and when you strip away the idea of Jerusalem and try to define it in its concrete reality, it takes on a much different uh, character uh, and also lends itself, therefore, to uh, at least several possible ways of resolving it. Uh, number one, by disaggregating uh, much of the area or space of Jerusalem outside of the particular and particularly small area which there are holy places and holy sites, an area that is, uh, as you can see on the, the maps here, uh, smaller than the old campus of Princeton University, about one square kilometer inside the old city and only slightly larger under any definition of the historic or holy basin. Uh, this becomes a far more manageable issue to deal with because one can disaggregate and separate out the issues outside of the old city and historic or holy basin. And they become, in the words of most people who look at this conflict, a real estate problem. It's an issue that involves where people live, uh, how they conduct their lives, uh, the space in which they occupy, and how that's going to be divided. But most of what we call Jerusalem is not a contentious issue in terms of religion, history, or holiness. The second issue I think that's important is that we've talked a great deal even here today, and you'll see as you read the uh, booklet, about uh, the several stakeholders. The fact is that there are two categories of stakeholders in the Jerusalem issue, even in the confined Jerusalem issue. There are, of course, the, the immediately combatant parties, uh, Israel and Palestine, uh, who are both seeking sovereignty control over this area. There are at least three religions, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, but there are also international stakeholders. Uh, let's not forget, for example, that in the Israel-Jordan peace treaty, Jordan has been given a role in dealing with the solution of the Jerusalem issue. So it's important as we think about devising ideas for resolving the Jerusalem issue that we not get it in our heads that we only have to uh, satisfy the requirements of the two immediate parties. There are a lot of stakeholders here and that's why uh, uh, solutions that uh, people propose which uh, seem simple uh, are far from it and require a great deal of consideration. It's in that respect I think that this initiative the Jerusalem Old City Initiative has brought forth three very critical elements uh, for uh, future policymakers' use. Number one is the idea that it's done a lot of work that the back room of policymaking requires. Uh, now, when the parties enter negotiations, we have some negotiators here today with us, been part of this process. The fact is that they do a lot of homework. They prepare papers, position papers, options papers and so forth. Um, there is probably no better set of papers uh, that has been prepared on the issue of Jerusalem than has been done for this project. The uh, Israeli and Palestinian and international participants in this progress really thought through what it is that policymakers require, uh, what it is that uh, would make a difference when the issues uh, were going to be negotiated, and they have really put out uh, four the consideration of policymakers, and you can find it on the website of this initiative, 
um, a, a large number of very, very good, uh, practical, and policy-oriented ways of addressing this issue. Secondly, in, in corresponding to that, um, this project has taken advantage of what Michael Bell properly called the toolbox of options. Uh, the idea that solving this problem is not simply a matter of getting the parties into a room and arguing for as long as it takes for them to reach agreement. Um, it's taking them out of the room. It's walking the ground. It's understanding the limitations of trying to deal with the historic or holy basin uh, because of the lack of definition that that problem uh, presents. Uh, the fact that it becomes in some ways far easier to deal with the old city of Jerusalem because there's a wall. Because as you'll see in the security papers, that wall presents the uh, security officials responsible for maintaining security certain advantages that they wouldn't have in open space. So the, the various tools that this project employed and suggested for policymakers really make it uh, quite invaluable. And third, I think the most interesting and current uh, impact of this project is the currency that it's given to uh, the idea of resolving the issue of Jerusalem. When this thing started six, seven years ago, I was still in government. And uh, I've known Michael Bell and Mike Malloy, John Bell, for many, many years. Um, I was quite supportive the first time I heard of this, but as with many of their uh, colleagues, uh, skeptical that um, uh, people would actually buy into these ideas. As one reads about uh, people's views today, both inside and outside government, as one reads about the results of the last time the Israelis and Palestinians talked, uh, September 2008, Ehud Olmert and Mahmoud Abbas, the ideas that you're reading in this booklet are the ideas that policymakers are now considering. They may not come out exactly as the Jerusalem Old City Initiative has presented them, but this initiative has uh, caught on to something, and it has uh, sparked a kind of both debate, but also the beginning of a consensus developing among the policy community on what it is that uh, may result in a uh, substantially agreeable outcome uh, for the old city uh, of Jerusalem. So I really, uh, not just because I was a, a small partner in this project, but uh, also because, uh, as with many in this audience, uh, I've been watching and participating in peace process activities for uh, many, many years. I really commend this uh, set of papers, these proposals, these ideas to you. Uh, read them carefully. Look at the maps. Um, in addition to what you have on this website, at the Center for Middle East Peace in Washington, there's a very interesting interactive set of maps that can help guide you through both the geography and demography of the Jerusalem issue. And the more you do delve into this, the more compelling the ideas become for resolving what in fact is a resolvable issue in the Arab-Israeli context. Thank you.